<clears throat> this is going to be another life cycle video, but this one is going to have to do with our first type of vascular plant, the ferns. And um, the mosses represent our uh, non-vascular plants. The ferns are going to re represent our seedless vascular plants. So most of our vascular plants uh, have seeds, which we'll learn later. But the ferns are going to represent these seedless vascular plants. So they're not going to use seeds. They're going to use spores still, um, just like the mosses do. So let's pull up the picture of our life cycle. So here we have the picture of the fern life cycle. And like always, I like to start with fertilization. And so we are going to start right here. Fertilization occurs. And remember, as always, fertilization is the sperm and the egg, which are both haploid, coming together to make the zygote, which is diploid. Uh, that's the way it is. Never change. So we're going to start here with fertilization. And sperm and egg have come together. And they have formed the diploid zygote. Now, in the moss, if you'll recall, that occurred in the archegonium, and that is still what we call the female part of the fern. We still call it the archegonium, and it's very similar to what happens in the moss. And the um, zygote is, of course, going to grow. It doesn't show it here, but it's going to develop into the embryo. Uh, this language will be the same no matter what we're talking about. We're always going to start with the zygote and then the embryo. And out of... Uh, this archegonium is going to grow the sporophyte generation. And if you remember, sporophyte um, is going to produce spores, but we're even going to use the word sporophyte in plants that don't really produce spores. Uh, the main thing is sporophyte represents the diploid part. Remember, all plants exhibit what we call alternation of generations. And what that means is that there is a multicellular part of the life cycle that is haploid and a multicellular part that is diploid. So we can think of the sporophyte generation as being the multicellular diploid part of the life cycle, and we can think of the gametophyte generation as being the multicellular haploid part of the uh, plant's life cycle. So the zygote is going to go to the embryo, and then that is going to become the sporophyte. And so the mature sporophyte is going to be what you are familiar with when you think of a fern. It's going to be this nice uh, photosynthetic uh, part of the plant, and that's going to differ from the mosses because if you remember in the mosses, it is the gametophyte generation that is actually the photosynthetic part of the uh, plant's life cycle. So for the first time uh, in the, the evolution of plants, the sporophyte is going to be dominant. It's going to be the dominant part of the life cycle. Now, underneath, if we could zoom in here, underneath these leaves... Uh, underneath the fronds, we don't call them leaves, and we call them fronds in the uh, ferns. Underneath them are these teeny tiny little um, brown things. They usually look brown when you're looking at the actual underside of a, of a real fern. Um, but they are what we call sporangia, or sporangium for short. So, now here's the word sporangium. And each one of these, they're under this right here is actually the frond, and then underneath those are uh, the sporangium. Now, a group of sporangium is what we call a sorus, or the plural of that would be sori, or sori. And the sorus is made up of you know several sporangium, and those sporangiums, uh, here's where they're kind of zoomed in, they're going to produce the spores, and so they are going to undergo meiosis, if you recall. Uh, fertilization is always going from two diploids coming together to make a haploid. And uh, meiosis is the opposite. Meiosis is where we go from being diploid and we wind up with lots of little haploid cells. So, inside the sporangium, 
meiosis is going to go on, and um, spores, eventually the, the sporangium is going to dry out, and the spores are going to be released all into the environment, and they are going to fall in an area that is uh, <clears throat> conducive to them um, growing into the gametophyte. So here you can actually see the young gametophyte growing out of the spore. Now remember, this whole part of the life cycle is haploid, Now, once the gametophyte becomes mature, it's a mature haploid gametophyte, what's actually going to occur is, it's, it's what we call, it's, it's very different. In the mosses, you had spores that became female gametophytes, uh, which had the archegonium, and you had spores that became male gametophytes, which had the anthridia, but in the ferns, it's actually going to be hermaphroditic which means that it has both sexes. So th there's actually going to be um, a part of that gametophyte, which is male, and that's going to have the anthridia, and then there's going to be a part of it that is female, and that's going to be the archegonium, and that'll have the eggs in it. Now inside the anthridium, uh, sperm will be produced, and inside the archegonium, you will have eggs produced. Now, very similar to the moss life cycle, the ferns need water because they have those flagellated sperm and they need to swim from the anthridia into the archegonium and actually fertilize that egg and then the egg becomes the excuse me, the egg becomes the zygote. So, some major differences, if we wanted to talk about differences between um, the moss life cycle, and if we want to talk about differences between the moss, so here we have the moss life cycle, that's not how you spell moss, moss life cycle, and here we have the fern, some things about the fern is the dominant generation is going to be the sporophyte. Um, in the moss, the dominant generation is going to be the gametophyte, which of course, if you remember, is haploid, and the sporophyte is diploid. Um, some similarities that they are going to have is they're both going to depend upon um, water for fertilization because the sperm will have to actually swim. Uh, the nomenclature for everything is the same. We have archegonia and anthridia in both of them. Um, but the major differences in their life cycle is, is really just simply the dominant generation. In the mosses, the dominant generation is the gametophyte. In the ferns, the dominant generation is the sporophyte. They are both going to uh, use spores to reproduce, so they are both seedless. But, if you will recall, a major difference between them, and this doesn't have to do with the reproduction, but a major difference between them is that the mosses are non-vascular, and the ferns are vascular. So, very quick um, recap. Fern life cycle, we're going to start always with fertilization. Sperm and egg are going to come together, produce the diploid zygote, which will grow into eventually the mature sporophyte, which is the dominant generation. That's what you usually see. That's what's photosynthetic. Uh, when you're out in the woods and you see ferns, it's got the fronds. Underneath the fronds are the sori. Uh, individual, or excuse me, singular would be sorus, and each sorus has multiple sporangium. The sporangium are going to, by meiosis, produce haploid spores. Those spores are going to develop into a hermaphroditic, um, a monoecious. There's another uh, good vocabulary word, monoecious, meaning one house, which means that there's one uh, structure that has male and female parts. Um, organism, and it's going to have the anthridia, which are the male 
part of the plant, and it's also going to have the archegonia, which are the female part of the plant. The archegonia will have the eggs, the anthridia will have the sperm. Um, we're going to rely on water, so rain waters and, and dew, and gonna, you know, ferns like moss is going to need to be in wet environments so that the sperm can swim down into the archegonium, fertilize the egg, and start the whole process over.